Let's take a look at setting up an animation of converting an object to wireframe so that it looks like the object is transforming into a wireframe version of itself. Okay, so we'll use this object right here, this little uh, tessellated sphere, uh, as, our, as our demo object. And I've created another version of it called Wireball here, and I just made it red. It's the exact same object, and it's just red. So we're going to use that later. So let's send this over to Layout. Okay, and let's go to camera view, which is six on the keyboard. And we'll just have this animate over, let's just say 30 frames. Okay, and at, at frame 15 at the halfway point, we'll set a keyframe. And at frame zero, we'll have it come over here. And at frame 30, we'll have it come over here. Okay. So if we go to our perspective view, we can see that these are two meter grid. This is a two meter square because down here it says grid two meters. So two meters, four, six, just roughly, we'll just get it over all the way to six. And then we'll do the same thing here. So two, four, six, that works. Okay, so it's gonna, it's, it's six meters on this side of the origin and six meters on this side of the origin. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll have this object as it passes through the center point convert to wireframe okay so to do that let's add a null and I'm just gonna call this dist for distance and we'll just leave it here in the center let's grab this uh, this ball object go over to object properties and under the render tab for clip map let's go ahead and open up the texture editor for that and for layer type, let's use a gradient. For the input parameter, let's choose distance to object, and we'll use the object that we just made, the distance null. Okay, and so when it's zero meters away, when it's right on top of it, we'll have that 100%. So that means it's going to clip it, it's going to it's going to erase it 100%. And then let's change the end to six meters, and let's say that at six meters, it's going to black which is zero 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 clipping okay and we can adjust this uh, as we see fit but let's go ahead and use that texture and we'll go to camera view and we'll just do a, a quick render say at frame five okay because of the the lighting we could change the lighting I'm just gonna change the background it'll make it that much easier to see um, we'll go to window backdrop options and I'm going to kill your eyes for a second. I'm just going to do yellow. Okay, and we'll do a render. Okay, so we've got the, the whole object there. If I go to frame 10, it starts to eat away that object. Let's go ahead and turn on double-sided as well. So we'll go to the surface editor, and for that ball, we'll do double-sided. Do a render. And now we can see inside as well. So it's eating it away at frame 15. It's 100% gone. At frame 20, it's starting to come back. And at frame, let's just say 25, 26, uh, we've got the, the whole ball. Okay, so we got the part of it, it eating away, but we want it to convert into a wireframe. Okay, so what we can do is take this object and clone it. So I'm just going to clone one copy. Okay, so ball two is doing the exact same thing. Okay. So that just saves me the time of setting up the, the same animation. With that ball selected, I'm going to replace with object and choose the wireframe ball, which is the red ball. Now they're both on top of each other, okay? And all we need to do is set up, is invert what's going on with the red. So let's go to object, properties, clip map, and we're gonna invert the keys. So let's close that down and let's uh, take a look at a render. We'll come over to frame 10 and F9. And so we've got red and blue. I, I'm actually going to change the, the light uh, just so we can see it a little bit better. So light, uh, Y for rotate. Okay, that'll be better. Okay, come over to frame 10, do a render. And we're changing it from red uh, you know, from blue to red as it passes through. But what we can also do, so you could have two different textures and you could use this as a setup of, of, 
uh, changing that and as it goes you know when it gets to frame 15 it's all red and then as it gets to 25 it's all blue when it gets to say 20 it's red and blue okay but what, what we're after is we want this to be wireframe and this to be um, you know the shaded view like this so what we can do is move over to the surface editor and for the surface um, for the wireframe ball the red ball we can go over to the advanced tab render outlines and we'll get wireframe instead of the blue now it doesn't have to be red you can make it blue if you want it to to match but what we can also do is take um, this and change this to a negative value say like negative two five oh not negative twenty five sorry negative point two five we'll do a, a small um, small little bending that's actually too small so let's do uh, negative one okay and it's pretty much the wireframe. If we go bigger, negative five, we start getting uh, bigger blocks. But this isn't the, the look that I want. If I take advantage of the perspective camera, so go to camera properties and change to perspective, I can actually get a much nicer look. It's a more three-dimensional shade uh, on, the, uh, on the wireframes using a negative value. But you need to use uh, a camera other than the classic camera. And so perspective camera works for that. And you can go as, as big on this as you want. So as it passes through, so we'll go back to zero. Okay, we got the blue. We'll go to frame five. It starts coming into to frame. We'll go to frame 10. It starts converting to wireframe at 15. It's 100% wireframe at 20. It starts going back into the solid shade and we've got the wireframe at 25 we're all back to blue okay so we could we could animate that and have it converting to wireframe okay and you could have any kind of texture you want on this and you can have any kind of texture you want on this and dress it up and give this uh, this neat effect